One thing that makes Apex Legends so interesting is the availability of choosing different player styles in this game. You can choose to be either an aggressive or a defensive legend or a character with both traits based on your skills and interests. It's very important to know what type of role you like to play because every character has its own unique abilities which can be useful in different situations. Watson is one of the support legends and in my opinion she is the most helpful character until this very right moment. Maybe you don't see many people use her in pubs and you assume that Watson is just not good enough or she is no fun to play with. But I'm just about to change your mind and I will explain the reason why people don't use her in pubs while she is the strongest support legend in this game. In today's video, we are going through a Watson tutorial and right now I'm going to share with you the most important 7 methods that you need to know in order to play this legend efficiently. So if you want to know these useful techniques, make sure to stick till the end because after this video you will have an altered mindset about Watson. Hi, my my name is Damien and welcome back with another video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and if you like this type of content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you hit the bell icon, you will be notified as soon as I drop my new videos. So let's just start with her primary role on the team. Watson is a passive legend which plays a defensive role. She is more of a support legend and it suits those people who like to help other legends. But you might think that how Watson can play as a supportive legend. Well, I understand that Watson is not like Lifeline or Gibraltar and playing with Watson's ability can be complicated. But as soon as you learn about her role and skills, playing Watson becomes really fun and challenging for you. Watson is a support legend and you always need to remember that it's your job to stay close to your team and always support your teammates. If you are a type of player who always play aggressive, I would recommend not to try Watson because she can become so strong when you play with her as a support legend. But if you play like an aggressive player, you might die over and over because she would not be able to escape from bad situations. That is exactly why I recommend you to always stay close to your team because if they go down, your job just begins. In that moment, you need to know how to use her abilities to change the course of the fight. Now let's analyze her abilities and see what she is actually capable of doing in a fight as a support legend. The first thing you need to know is that she has a low profile passive ability which can cause the incoming damage to increase by 5%. Watson takes extra damage because she's hard to get to, not because she's hard to hit. This is exactly why you need to be less predictable than other characters without this passive perk. Her other passive ability, the Spark of Genius, will be discussed later when we are analyzing her ultimate. But now let's talk about her tactical ability which is Premier Security. Her tactical ability is one of the advantages which makes her so unique. You can connect nodes to create electrified fences which can damage the enemy for 10 each time they come in touch with it and it can slow down enemy for roughly 1 to 2 seconds. You can place a maximum of 12 nodes but you need to know that you can only have 4 node charges ready and after using them there is a 30 second cooldown to recharge one node. But remember that the perimeter security charges have 3 second cooldown instead of 30 if you are near an interception pylon made by either you or another Watson. After reaching the maximum number of placed nodes deploying a new node will destroy the oldest one. Don't forget that you can pick up the nodes to refund one charge. Each node has 25 health and you can destroy it by shooting or punching it for 2 times. But along with all this information, there are many other tips that you need to know about Watson fences which help you to know more about her skills. The first tip is that Watson can connect her node to the nodes placed by enemy Watson. The fence between will belong to the Watson who link them together. The fences can cause the caustic gas trap to explode if they hit it. The fences ignore knockdown shield health and it will damage the health of those who are affected by the fences. The fences cannot be seen through Bangalore's smoke. So if you have a Bangalore on your team, you can ask her to use a smoke on your fences while you're getting pushed by the enemy. Then it will make it harder for them to see the fences properly. Gibraltar's dome can disconnect fences if it's place between two nodes. Obviously always try to block all the interests through the location that you want to defend. So if you are in a building try to block all doors and if you are in a high ground try to block the zip lines if there are any. Always remember to use the nodes to not let your enemy hit it and destroy it easily. Always place your fence to block the raid portal, especially the one that's for your teammate because you always want to choke your enemy if they take your portal. You always need to block all the choke points while you are hitting to the next ring. The reason is if they cross an active fence you will be notified on your screen then you can look at your enemy if they're behind you. The fences don't require solid ground between nodes so you can place them over gaps like a surveys. The wheel on the screen informs you about the number of active nodes you have. So make sure to keep monitoring the wheel to know how many nodes you are currently using. The blue dots represent how many active nodes you have and the white dots represent the remaining nodes which you can use. It was some information that you needed to know about what's and fences but now let's see how we should be using the fences perfectly in any situation. There are many different ways that you can actually use fences and I believe it's something that 
requires practice if you want to become a pro with Watson. But I'm going to give you one strategy which doesn't matter if you never played Watson or just played a little. Because I'm pretty sure after this you at least know the basics about the notes and you won't get confused later when you are in the most basic situation. Imagine you are hearing footsteps and the enemy is coming your way. The first thing you need to do is making one layer of fence between you and your enemy. And it doesn't matter where you are, in a building or in an open area. Once you place it, you need to cross the fences, then you and your enemy are in the same side. Then you start fighting your enemy. If things go poorly, you can go back behind your fences and drop your ultimate and start healing quickly. So in this case, you get either push or the enemy won't risk it because you are Watson. Let's assume the enemy makes a mistake and they push you, so a few things can happen. First, they start using grenades on you, which you have your ultimate down to protect you. When they come close, now they need to face your fences. If you're already healed up, you can also place a few more fences to further secure your ground before your enemy gets there. As soon as they are by the fences, they either need to destroy them or pass through it. If they stop and try to shoot them, they literally waste their time because you and your teammates are there to kill them while they are getting distracted by the fences. And if they try to pass through it, the fences damage and slow them down, which you can choke your enemy easier. Always remember that the purpose of using fences is to make a secure area for you and your teammates, not to make a trap for your enemy. So in order to use different shapes for Watson fences, you need to practice and experience different situations. But here, I'm going to show you a few of them until you become confident with your own preferences. One way which is very popular is making triangle with the fences. The reason why this shape is so popular is because when you use a triangular shape, you can have three layers. So if your enemy wants to destroy the whole shape, they need to destroy two nodes instead of one. The second shape which is very useful is making two attached triangles. This shape can be good for places where the enemy can come to you only from behind and front. Then this shape is very suitable for those places. If there is no block on your side, this shape wouldn't help you because as you can see the sides are almost free to walk which is not secured enough. Another two shapes that can help you for a square and rectangular surfaces are these two. If you are in a high ground and the surfaces is like one of these two, you can choose any of them to secure your ground very well. Don't forget that these two shapes require all your nodes to be used. The next type is Z-type. I would call it Z-type because when you place it, it looks like a Z. This type of fence is very good for when you are running through a closed area like a tunnel and the enemy is chasing you. You place your fences like this while you are running. Then it can delay your enemy for a few seconds which can help you to lose them easier. Another type of fence that I found particularly useful is to use this shape when you are in a building which has two doors in front of each other. You can connect the nodes like this then not only you cover the doors but you also cover the middle area and instead of only two layers of fences you can have four layers as you can see. Now if you are in an open area which doesn't have any specific shape, you need to use your fences in a way to block all the interiors to your fortified area. Then with the rest of the nodes you can make different shapes in the middle to make your surrounding more secure. Don't forget to choose a choke point area where you know how to make the best spot ever for your teammates. Now let's move on to a passive which is Spark of Genius and her ultimate interception pattern. The reason why I put these two together is because they are a combo with each other. A Spark of Genius which is her passive ability allows her to fully charge her ultimate by using only one ultimate accelerant. After season 6, you can now carry two ultimate accelerants in only one slot with Watson. So I recommend you to find two while looting in game because you're going to need at least one for the last round. The cooldown of her ultimate is 180 seconds which is very long but with her passive you can charge it fully. The first ultimate accelerant you find you need to use it immediately to make sure you have your pylon ready because you never know what happens in Apex. Her ultimate interception pylon can destroy incoming ordnance if it comes to its radius and it can recharge damage shield for 2 shields per second for 90 seconds if you're close to it. You can place up to 3 pylon and it has 150 health each. Remember that it doesn't stack if you place 3 pylons to recharge your broken shield faster so make sure to not waste a second one for this. The pylon can be destroyed by getting shot so make sure you always destroy the enemy's pylon before you push. Pylon can destroy the following ordnance, frag grenade, termite grenade, arc star, bangalore's rolling thunder, nox gas traps, gibraltar's ultimate and caustic gas grenade if they come to its radius. In order to use the pylon properly there are some tips that you need to know as well if you want to get the best out of her ultimate. First, always try to place the pylon in a place where it cannot be destroyed easily. Because the first thing the enemy usually does is when they see the pylon, they make sure that they destroy it before they push because they can use their ordnance on you easier. The next one is when you are behind a cover or a rock and you need to heal up, place your pylon on your side for two reasons. One, you want to make sure that you don't get nade on you and second, it can actually help you to recharge your shield faster while you are healing. Another place that you need to place your pylon is when you need to revive your teammate, make sure you always use your pylon 
and because you don't want to get hit by any ordnance while you're reviving you can also use pylon as a cover to stay behind then the enemy cannot shoot you easily while you are healing or reviving your teammates and the last one is always try to save a pylon for the last few rounds especially in ranked games on round 5 or higher because it's very important to have one for the last rounds there are two styles that you always need to consider while playing Watson. One is for close range and one is for mid range and long range. For mid and long range, you need to make sure you're always in a position that you can help your aggressive teammate and at the same time, you should be behind your team because if they go down, you're there to jump in immediately. That is why for long range and mid range, I highly recommend you to pick a gun like charge rifle, longbow, G7, triple take, wingman, hemlock, r one havoc or a flatline. Except for the charge rifle and longbow, these guns can be really good for late game because you need to fight your enemy in mid range in the final rounds. For close range fight, it's really important that you always stay behind your tank legend and always be a second player instead of being the first target. Your job in close range fight is when your aggressive legend in your team is initiating a fight. You need to always be involved as a support player to not let the enemy to knock your teammate down. For close range fight, you can choose flatline, devotion, havoc, wingman, bolt SMG, EVA 8, massive or a P2020. For the best weapon combinations in my experience, you can choose one of these combinations based on your interests and your skills and they're all good, one for close range and one for mid range and long range. Remember this is based on my own experience and you can choose whatever you feel more comfortable with. For a very defensive player style, you can play Watson, Lifeline and Caustic, which I believe it's the most defensive solid team that you can ever make with Watson. You can also play her with Rampart, Bangalore or Gibraltar for a defensive play. But if you want the best combination for Watson to rotate around the map, you can choose one of the following combinations. You can play Watson Raid Pathfinder, Watson Raid GB, Watson Bloodhound Raid, or Watson Revenant Raid. Remember that it's always good to have a Raid on your team because if you knock down an enemy, Raid can make a portal through them to end them quickly. Then you can take the portal back to your fortified area again. And also it's always good to play Watson with a legend who can scan the survey beacon because you always want to be ready in the last round with your fences. It's very important to always watch Crypto's drone because a single EMP he can literally destroy all fences plus the pylon. Crypto is the biggest counter for Watson in this game but remember that if you're quick and you have your ultimate ready, you can just place the pylon again then it restores your broken shield and allows you to place your fences every 3 seconds. Caustic's gas can be a threat for Watson too. If your pylon doesn't destroy Caustic's gas before it lands, the gas can destroy your fences and pylon. Also, enemy mirrors can send decoys into the fences to determine your location. And last but not least is communication. Communicating with your teammates is very important because Watson is the one who chooses the next location in the upcoming rings. You need to pick the best choke point spots in every round because you are the one who makes a secure place for your teammates. Don't forget that your job as a Watson is to be your team's architect and anchor. As soon as your fortified area is ready, you can start shooting people or forcing them to fight each other. Then if your team knocks down an enemy, you can ask your rate or pathfinder to make a portal or a zipline to the enemy's squad to finish them quickly. But be careful to not get busy with looting and before you get third party, ask your team to take the portal back before it ends. This is exactly why you need to communicate with your teammates if you want to play Watson. In pubs games, people just want to play casual and they don't care about communicating with each other. And I think it can be one reason why this legend is so underrated because people refuse to communicate and if you don't, you can't play this legend efficiently. But as you may know, Watson has a very high peak rate in ranked and tournament because it's really important to have a solid support legend for competitive games. I know that playing Watson can be complicated and if you don't have enough experience, playing this legend can be boring but if you spend some time to practice and learn her positioning and skills, I promise you this legend becomes your main because you understand that more than half the characters in this game are basically helpless against her abilities. I hope this video was informative enough to help you understand more about Watson. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, otherwise I have no way to know whether or not you enjoyed it. If you want me to make any specific videos for you guys, don't forget to comment down below and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. And last, if you are new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you turn on the notification, you will be notified as soon as I drop my new videos. Thank you guys for watching my content and see you guys in the next video.